America's independent voice. 855 Rob 3080 to get into the radio program. I welcome to the show a man who has appeared in many films such as Glory, The Firm, Gordy, remember the Titans, The Blind Side. You know him as the drill sergeant in Forrest Gump. Famo Amalami is with us from Hosea Feed the Hungry, the executive director of Hosea Feed the Hungry and Homeless. How are you, sir? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me on. This means so much to me, uh, Elizabeth, and the memory of Hosea Williams and the Hosea Feed the Hungry family. God bless you, Rob. Well, I appreciate you coming on on such short notice. You are an incredible uh, American who has done a, a lot for our country and a lot for our uh, our race, and I appreciate you for coming on on such short notice. A lot of people don't know uh, your uh, repertoire and the things that you have been into, but you're here to talk to us today about the Hosea Feed the Hungry program. You're the executive director along with your wife, and you do quite a bit of good work. What exactly are you doing this weekend, given the fact that the Martin Luther King holiday is coming up? Everybody wants to talk about Martin Luther King's memory, but they need to understand also this is a weekend of action, not just the parties, and we've got an extra day to party. <laughs> You're so right. He's, the, the day on means exactly what it is, a day on and not a day off, a day on for action, a day on for serving the poor that they spent many times with the, the Poor People's Campaign was a major part of the movement. And I'm sure Dr. King wouldn't have been with the uh, uh, sanitation workers in Memphis that uh, end up uh, costing him his life if he didn't understand the importance of supporting the poor and the struggle of economics in this country. The the the, uh, the one percenters, uh, uh, the Occupy people, they got it right, but the movement was expressing the same thing. The, the movement was the original Occupy movement because we knew there was injustice economically and we wanted a, a level playing field so every man can have the opportunity to raise himself up and to do the best he can for his family. Now, it sounds like you support Occupy. I support the whole movement about the injustice of uh, how much the economics is tilted against the poor, the working poor, uh, the, the lower middle class that is dissolving. The gap between the haves and the have-nots are increasing. But the, the whole idea of the movement and what Dr. King believed in was about economic justice as well as the social justice. You can't have one without the other. So I look at Dr. King's birthday. This January 16th, we're celebrating it at the Georgia International Convention Center as a way of saying the dream is still alive. We aren't just having speakers and we aren't just having meetings, but we're feeding people. We're giving people clothes. We're giving people uh, access to services that will help them continue long beyond the day itself. Now let's talk about Reverend Hosea Williams. He was a lieutenant, a foot soldier for Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Tell us a little bit about this great man, Hosea Williams, who I've had the opportunity to meet only one time in life before his untimely death. Unfortunately, I, I believe Reverend Hosea Williams is an institution. Absolutely. I had the great honor and the God-divine appointment of meeting him in 1975. I was down here going to school. I was at Morehouse, and uh, he was having a dinner for the poor. So he invited uh, college uh, people to come, and I had the privilege of, that's when I first met him, and I did my first Hosea Feed the Hungry event that day in 1975, and that's two years before I married his daughter, so I wasn't even thinking about her at the time. I just liked the idea this man had a heart to serve people who were down and out, and he was trying to give them a chance to come back up. So that was my first meeting with him, and I have been hooked and addicted to helping people and working with those who are doing their best ever since then. So that's a lot of years. And he had that kind of charisma. He was a man of action. He would go into the towns and get beat up. Uh, his life was threatened so many times. He was viciously beaten many times. He was with the jail over 100 and almost 120 times in some very rough places. So he was a warrior. He was a man of the streets, but yet he could talk to presidents as well as somebody living on Skid Row, all with the same courtesy and respect. 
he was something special, no doubt. And his trademark overalls. Trademark overalls with the red shirt, and everybody knew his whole mantra, unbossed and unbossed. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's We're talking about Because people try to buy them off, and they sure try to boss him around. But he was standing up for those who didn't have a voice. He was standing up for those who nobody else would give the time of day to. He said unbossed and unbossed, and that's what he passed on to Elizabeth and I because he trained us, and he was a hard taskmaster. Let me tell you that part, too. <laughs> Do you have any more time, uh, Famo Amalami? I have, sure. I'm, I'm yours. All right. We're talking to a Famo Amalami. He's the executive director of Hosea Feed the Hungry and Homeless. That's right. He's on the phone with us right now. We're going to come back and talk a little bit about the... Of course, feeding the homeless initiative and how it's branched out. I didn't know it was international now. I had no idea. National implications, big national story. A famous Amalami on the line with us. Back in moments with more of Reading News Review, the show. America's independent voice talking to a famous Amalami, executive director of Hosea Feed the Hungry and Homeless. About everything from Occupy to what's going on with MLK Day this week coming on Monday. A lot of people taking it as a day off. The legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King is worth remembering with action. And that's what we're talking about right now. Now, Mr. Amalami, you've had the opportunity not just to work in Atlanta, but you said, Hosea, feed the hungry. You branched out. Yes, let me tell you how it all started, Rob. I first uh, went to Africa with a group of people uh, in 2000. Hosea Williams died that same year, November 2000. Elizabeth and I took over once he died, and... 30 years he had been doing just Thanksgiving and Christmas. Right. A year after he died, we turned into every day. We still, and we expanded to two dinners. He was doing mainly Thanksgiving and Christmas. We expanded it to Martin Luther King's Day, Easter. Then we added a back to school where we give out about three, 4,000 book bags full of everything for kids. And then we also added a Labor Day for the unemployed this year, and then we turn it to every day, Rob, where we help people come in who, who have problems with utility and rent assistance every day and food assistance. Then seven years ago, we started going to Haiti, taking medicine and food, and we realized it was such a great need, one of the poorest countries in the world. This was long before the earthquake. So we go there every year, spend two, three weeks, we go to the Haiti, uh, Philippines. We set up a school there in the, one of the poorest parts of the Philippines, up in the mountains. And we started a school there, and it's been there about 10 years. And we've been supporting the students and the teachers. We support orphanages in Uganda, especially Soroti, the outskirts. We've been to uh, South Africa, uh, helping the, the, the workers there, especially the harvesters. And then we, we, we keep increasing because the need is telling us we have to do this in the diaspora all across this world. It's like the Sankofa moment, meaning uh, looking back and gaining the best of what our ancestors did to go into an unknown future, just like the Sankofa bird. That's the direction Hosea Feed the Hungry has gone in based on what we've learned from all of our elders, especially people like Dr. King, uh, uh, Hosea Williams. Uh, Fred Shuttlesworth, who just died not too long ago, James Orange, these wonderful great heroes and, and sheroes of the movement. Shuttlesworth just passed away about, what, just at the end of last year? Exactly. Hmm. He gave so much, Rob. The yep. man gave, he put it all on the line. How can we not be inspired by these lives? Well, let, let me just say I'm inspired by the work you're doing. Uh, what can we do to help you do more of what you're doing in all of these countries and all of these different days? By helping us to connect with people who have the same passion, who want to do these things, 
We can do more together if we come together, which is what has happened to our community. People no longer want to work with one another. That's how the movement came about. People put aside their differences and said, for the greater good, let's work together. That's why I see so many people just come together once for Dr. King's uh, birthday, and they never speak and talk to each other the rest of the year. It's almost like a sham. It's almost like an insult to his memory. I don't get that. We should be doing this all the time. And uh, I, so I, I got issues with people pretending and perpetrating, especially on his day when we should be honoring him, doing the work he wanted done all the time, not just for the cameras, not just to have a good speech and look like we're doing something, but really get down in the dirt and get our hands dirty, Rob, and do the work. That's what it takes. Sometimes you've got to get your hands dirty. There are more people now that have lost their homes, have lost their jobs, have nowhere to go. And, and as cold as it is today, as it will be this weekend, there are more people that need help now more than ever. Am I right in that? You are absolutely right. People who have never thought about being on a bread line, never thought about coming and ask for groceries, never thought about, can I get help with my utilities? They're about to cut my lights off. I'm a grandmama, and I can't take the cold. People who never thought about getting evicted, come and get rent assistance uh, with Jose if he's the hungry. Uh, mortgage, they're foreclosing on hardworking people who worked hard all their lives but found themselves in a the most desperate situation. We are asking other organizations, uh, 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 people out there, go to JoseFeedTheHungry.com. Look and see if we meet your criteria as an organization that's credible. We've been around 41 years. Help us do the work of what the dream spoke about, helping the least of these among us. If they're hungry, let's give them food. If they're about to lose their shelter, help, let's help them stay in their place. These women and children are making up the biggest group of homeless people now than ever before. We have to stop that. We have to stand in the gap, Rob. We're, we're, otherwise, we're a disgrace to what the people died for in the movement. Do you think that this surge that we're seeing is one that the president is dealing with uh, the way he should, or do you think he could do more? The president can absolutely do more. It's heartbreaking seeing this great man having uh, uh, to play these games when he was left, first of all, with a, sh a shambles of repair, so he was almost handicapped in a way that they knew it would take him two or three years to clean up the mess that he was left. Then he's had to play Patsy with this Republican Party who would rather see the whole country fall apart than, it's, than to fall under the leadership of this man. And then third, the president hasn't really stayed, stood, stood by his principles to help those people who got him into office, who said, yes, I can. We believe in the dream, and the dream has been a nightmare, and our president has had his hand in that nightmare. Mm. Uh, Famo Amalami, executive director of Hosea Feed the Hungry and Homeless. How do folks get more information on what you do? And one more time with the event this weekend and when it will be held. The event is the Martin Luther King Jr. Festival of Service at the Georgia International Convention Center out there at 2000 Convention Way off of Camp Creek Parkway in Atlanta, Georgia. From 10 o'clock to 3 o'clock, we are inviting College Park, uh, Riverdale, Hakeville, East Point, Atlanta, Clayton County, Fulton County, DeKalb County. Come out and enjoy uh, haircuts and and. And, and clothes and food, entertainment, medicine, come out there and help us. Go to Hosea, H O S E A, feedthehungry.com. Go online, you can make your donations, you can help us out, and just come and keep for yourself if what we're doing measures up. And that is on Monday, right? That is this coming Monday, January 16th. All right. Afemo Amalami, thank you so much for coming on the program. We appreciate you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And this helps me keep, keep the fight up. Thank you, Rob. I needed that. Anytime, Afemo. Just let me know if you ever need anything. We're here for you with Jose Afid, the hungry and homeless. Always. Thank you, sir. God bless you and carry on the fight, young man.
We will do just that. Back in moments, we'll carry on the fight with Occupy Atlanta. I'll tell you what they're up to.